Hello and welcome to the podcast, Life as a, a show intently focused on exploring and unearthing the details of professions and the people behind them. I'm your host, Christopher Schoenwald. On today's show, we're going to explore life as a culinary entrepreneur through a conversation with a very special guest who may just have one of the most unique professional backgrounds out there. Gabby Flores is a culinary entrepreneur, a culinary nutritional expert, and a wellness enthusiast. She's the co-founder and kitchen goddess at Bliss for Laundry, a transformational wellness retreat for women. She's also the co-owner at Mess Hall, a shared kitchen and food event space in Toronto, Canada. Previously, Gabby worked seven years for the United Nations World Food Program, dividing her time between chasing hurricanes and working towards making this world a better place. As a public information officer, she was in charge of directing and coordinating various public affairs programs and events in the various countries she served. After traveling a quarter of the world, she decided to return to Toronto. The year 2013 gave her a chance to regroup and relaunch her life, now as an entrepreneur. Her heart has always known that her purpose in life is to help others, whether it's at a community or individual level. And she's made it a mission to find her ways to transform the human body from deprivation to abundance. Her passion is food and getting in the kitchen and experimenting with new ingredients to make them delicious, nourishing, and to extract their powers to heal. Gabby currently lives in Toronto with her French husband, her two-year-old boy, and her dog, Shuket. Gabby, welcome to the show. Thank you. And you pronounce Shuket perfectly. Well, not I everyone look, gets it. <laughs> I did look it up. I did. I'm not going to lie. I looked it up and actually wrote it in as well, not to make a mistake. <laughs> I, I love the name though. Yeah. I know people always ask, you know, how do you say it? People say Shuet, Shuet, like they just can't. And then, so Shuket is a, it's a French pastry. Yes. Um, it's like I, a puff, right? And yeah. so it's a, it's a, it's a shoe. And so um, it was my favorite when I was in France. So when we got her and she's like the same color of, you know, a, a shoe of, of yeah. dough. Yeah. And so we just named her Shuket. I love it. Yeah. I had to look it up and I saw like the imagery associated with it. And I was like, yeah, mouth watering as well. So, well, I mean, if you got, when I get an image, you would like, I would get a bakery and I will go um, to Starbucks. This is Paris. I will go to Starbucks um, because I needed to have my soy milk. So that's the only place in France that you're going to find soy milk. And I would go to uh, my now husband's uh, balcony and I would just sit there with a box of chouquettes and okay. a large latte. And that's what I would eat for breakfast. <laughs> that is a pleasant image. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to jump right into this, Gabby. I've got a segment for you here and it's called Coloring Wikipedia. And basically this is a segment in which we try to add some perspective to some cold sort of like explanations of jobs. And as you can gather from the title, I mean, coloring Wikipedia, you know, I'm searching for job titles on that platform. And I'm going to be straight up with you. Culinary entrepreneur was not in Wikipedia. So I'm sensing a bit of an opportunity here for you. I mean, that could be a discussion on it for a different day. But but luckily enough, I was able to find uh, a definition from EHL Insights, a Swiss-based hospitality university for this explanation of a culinary entrepreneur. Are you ready? Yeah. All righty, here we go. So culinary entrepreneur, by definition, a food or culinary entrepreneur is simply someone who starts their own business in the food or culinary industry. It could be someone who creates the next meal kit for a specialty diet, for example, vegetarian keto meals, someone who purchases a food truck and launches their own small food business, or someone who opens their own catering company. Food entrepreneurs can address a challenge they see in the food system by combining food, business, and social entrepreneurship. All right, Gabby, spice it up a little bit here and add some flavor. That's hope an awesome you, I, I hope you like those actually. comments I just dropped in there for you. But. <laughs> no, that's an awesome this definition, and I actually yeah. hadn't heard of it. Um, and I think, I mean, it's pretty right on. I think when I, I was trying to for so long, trying to come up like, who are, like, I needed a title. Like, people just yeah. need titles. 
just because like I needed a business card. What do I call myself? And right, right. so I wasn't, so for a long time I was, um, you know, I transitioned to being a chef and that's what I was doing. And like, you know, one of the part of the finishes, like I do catering or I do mm-hmm. events, or I do meals for people. But then it, there was more to it when I started doing retreats. I mm. wasn't just doing food at the retreat. I was doing the retreat. So that also just became part of that definition. So like, how do you call it when you're doing wellness mm. for your soul and your spirit um, through food? And it's not just because of the healthiness of the food. Mm. And then uh, and then I started doing a lot more wellness um, um, related events in Toronto. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I opened my, you know, brick and mortar where I wasn't just, I was, I'm not like, even now, I'm not even cooking, but I am teaching and I am looking for other people, building a network of of uh, culinary experts, of chefs, or, you know, mamas and papas that like to cook, and they come together in a space, and we teach, but we also have a part of um, of the space where we um, allow food producers to begin, like the startups, that they just don't know, you know, what to do next, or they lost a job because of COVID, and they just wanted to, you know, work on their passion, so I'm involved in all that. So, yeah, wow. So this is like, you know, and I sit here in my computer, like I'm not even in the kitchen. I go there because I have to clean. And there you go. I have to go clean my kitchen. I, I, you know, like we do have some help, but like, you know, it, it costs money. So a lot of the times it's like what we do behind the scenes as a, as a chef or as a wellness, or is it, well, it is a sort of culinary entrepreneur because yeah, it's yeah, no, related. It's, it's, I think, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I it would seem just by the way you outlined it. I mean, your day to day would seemingly vary quite a bit. W- would that be kind of accurate too? I mean, with oh, all yeah, those different totally. things. Oh yeah, totally. Yes, I you know like sometimes I have a marketing hat, or a I sometimes I have a negotiator hat, or sometimes I am actually a cleaner, or I'm actually you know cooking because I did plan an event when I should have not had. So definitely every day there is something new, uh, and sometimes I'm just sitting here literally like just replying to emails and getting people to uh, to get me answers so that I can put an event together because uh, that's what I seem to do most. And so, so yeah, every day it's completely different. Um, and I think most jobs, hopefully, I would say, you want to have something different every day because otherwise you wouldn't get really bored. I don't know like how accountants will feel, but like I think, and, and I think by, by, by adding sort of that entrepreneur um, title in, in in the title uh part of the title it's uh it, it's just so that i it just means i am moving all the time around food yeah no that's i think that you you explained it really well i think it kind of gives a lot of clarity for for what that would entail and it sounds like also too that's like a highly personalizing like this is what it means to you and in, in your business and the way you're moving with things and you know, that definition could fit a whole different realm of, of ideas for somebody else, you know, within that sort of area. And I think the, the one I, what the time I, uh, when I listed, when I heard of that title, because uh, I did hear it from someone, um, I, I looked her up really quick and that uh, this woman had gone from being a baker to now being on, you know, national TV, being a judge to whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. If that's a trajectory, you know. Like, That'd be a nice path, yeah. <laughs> I right, know. So, right. so that's why like, I think it fits. It fits really nicely. Uh, and then what I love is that people are like, oh, what is that? So I'm like, yeah. there you go. I can tell started. you now nice, what I do. Nice. And yeah. here we are on a podcast describing it. I know. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think it's working for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to move along into another segment here. And this is kind of a straightforward one. It's just a Q&A sort of discovery thing. I'm going to throw a few questions at you and just, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So what I'm going to do here is on the first question, I'm going to reference some of your past um, as a visibility and public information officer, emergency response for UN World Food Program. What you do now, you know, of what we were just speaking about, kind of just looking at this on a surface level, the two just seem like I don't know, completely different worlds, you know, utterly different. But I, I'm wondering whether or not like these divides are as great as what they appear to be on the outside. So I guess like when you look at like terms of reference, um, I mean, let me start sort of at the end. You know, if when I think sometimes I'm like, okay, what's next? 
if I'm done with this, you know, the culinary world or like, you know, cause I don't know what comes next. Um, I always think, well, at the end of the day, you almost become a set of skills, right? And then you can dump it into a piece of paper, which is what people expect you to have, um, outlining and summarizing who you are according to your skills, right? So I'm like, oh, that's easy because like, you know, I have a lot of skills from when I was, um, you know, as a professional at the, at the UN and I've built a lot of skills uh, now, this last eight years, maybe will be 10 as a, an entrepreneur. And when I know that I have done this exercise, but when I think of like the transferable skills that I, I developed and I learned as, you know, working in the UN um, with two different roles, because I was doing two different things at some, at, at some point mm -hmm. um, to bring it into what I'm doing now. I'm like, okay, I, I can see, you know, obviously like you develop and you strengthen who, what you do, what, what skills you develop um over the years right and you become like almost like pick here and pick here no nope, i won't do that no nope, i won't do that like you asked me right now to to write a press release i'll be like no i'll hire someone you know like uh before you're like oh no 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 the hustle i'll do it you know so right. um i think yes if you look at it and, and you think about it sort of yeah, the UN, you know, what I used to do, like, you know, I started with doing development work and then I was doing emergency work, which is like two different things. And yeah. now I'm in like Toronto working from home, but mostly at a kitchen. And then I was doing some chef work mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, they, they're very different. However, now that I'm running sort of two businesses, um, there's skills that you know, I do need like mm -hmm. from, from what I used to do. So like anything of like planning and organizing. And, um, I think my, my biggest, um, uh, one that I've learned, um, at the UN, it's that part of, uh, negotiating, negotiating and, um, and sort of like the skill, I don't know how to call it, but like the skill of like really know how to network yeah, and connecting, right just yeah connecting with people they couldn't, and they, they finding, exactly. finding places in the middle of where to meet how to do it and but then the the coolest thing i think that I, i'm always very proud of that, that i do is just like coming like for simple so like if you it's like almost like a researcher that you're looking and looking and reading and reading and then you come up with this like beautiful you know masterpiece you know this paper that you present so i almost do that with like everything i do so like and i think i learned that a lot from the un because like un is like very um result base like you want you're doing something you have the amount of money that you have and you have to have a result and so i i think my brain was just trained to work that way and everything i do now it's that way like you know like if i'm talking to this person this person this person this person what is the motive how do i bring it together and what's that end result mm. and so i think in terms of the, those skills that's what I, I do and i so that's in that in that sense and i think in the other sense is, is for me, um, you know, having sort of spent my first few years at the UN, uh, after having studied international development um, and, and choosing international development as a study, is that part of like the human connection and the part of, um, we're really part of something bigger. It's not just us. And, and the helping, like I, you know, every day that I was on, like in, in the field working or developing or just like taking pictures, talking to people, um, it really just got me that closer and closer to, you know, like earth and, and, and people and, and the globe and love. Yeah. There's, and there's a purity in it, I think, exactly. right? I mean, there's, there's something pure about, you know, helping someone in, in a genuine fashion. There's, there's no underhanded sort of motivations here. Like you're there genuinely to, to help somebody to, to improve their lives in some capacity. Exactly. And, exactly. and that's something that hasn't, that you have to be, you know, I always say you have to be born with it mm. um, because it's not easy what you see when you see things, you know, an earthquake and a flood. And, and so that, you know, if I translate it to what I do now um, and the reason I started doing the food and the way I look at food and the way I use food to teach others is the same idea of like to me you know learning after I've learned studying nutrition is how much food can do 
from like mental health to just having a stomach ache or like at, you know at any pain or any sort of you can use food um it, it's like magic it's like and you see it in a lot of cultures food really is it means so much um to to just come coming in, in community in like you know like i say like healing so i think um i think i'm not too far from wanting to use food to help people to come closer to to have people around the table and share yeah. um and have a conversation yeah i guess that kind of leads into my next question in terms of some of these events at mess hall you know, the companies that you run I mean, I've, I've checked out your website and just kind of like looking at the imagery and what it's all about. And like, from what I can gather, it just, you know, to be honest, I kind of get the warm fuzzies from it all, you know, and it kind of, I think leads into what you're just speaking about. And I'm, I'm curious about what these events are, like what makes them special? You know, obviously you just, you spoke about the food, but in terms of that human connection as well, I mean, are they structured events? I mean, I'd like love to hear more about that side of it. Well, um, because of COVID, so we opened Mess Hall um, a couple months before COVID hit. Uh, and uh, so we didn't really have the opportunity until mm -hmm. literally like not even a month ago to have in-person events again. Um, but over the pandemic, we were able to do a couple of um, virtual events. And even then, um, you know, yes, they were structured in the sense that you do have to sign up and pay. And that way we, um, for the virtual, we used to call them date night. Uh, you just had to, um, you know, you pay, you register for whatever theme we had created. And yeah, we coordinated and we had, you know, five different businesses participating uh, in putting this kit that you would come pick it up. And then at home, you will set it up, whether it was a cooking class or like just putting things missing class so that you can then sit, connect on your computer. Mm. Yeah, 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 Zoom, <laughs> and then gather around. But even that moment of just like, you know, we were all desperate of like this sort yeah. of feeling of gathering. And oh, we enhanced together. that moment. Exactly. So we would just gather in Zoom and then have someone... I don't know, teach you something new and just like make you laugh and just like forget for two seconds that we were on the screen, but still we were connected. Is that what it, what it or is that what it is where like you are leading a discussion in terms of the food? Like this is what's prepared, this is how it was made. Is that kind of like the, the basis of the discussion? Yeah, so I'll then? give you a quick example. Um, we did um actually Japanese, um a Japanese night, and it, it and I take that as an example because it was really sweet we had a um uh the the chef who has actually wasn't having she wasn't japanese but she was um a chef that happened to make created her company around making fusion sushi um mm -hmm. and so she sat in our space by herself I mean, I was there because we had the cameras and stuff. And um, and she taught you how to roll sushi. So that was the first part of the class. And then um, then obviously you got all the ingredients. So you did the rolling with her and she showed you how to make sushi. So you did it at home. But on the side, she had given you food, food from her company so that you could have dinner plus the sushi. And then we had someone um, sitting in, 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 in its like cavern in like downtown Toronto to teach you about sake. So mm -hmm. we had um, bottles of sake. So you choose to have just the one taste or like a different taste. And we brought you like the little cup that has a name, sorry, I forget, of where to drink your sake. And so um, he taught you and he gave you, like he gave us like the history and the history of the building and what it does to the taste of the sake made here in Toronto. So that's that's a little bit of what we did. And then um, and then people can, you know, ask questions. And then, yeah, that was uh, about, I think it was like two hour event. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can just imagine, I mean, people walking away, just, you know, feeling a degree of fulfillment in, in taking part in something like that. And probably for yourself as well. Like, and also they learn, yeah. they learn not only to make sushi again, but also like my whole point was like, now you can go to a Japanese restaurant and order sake and know what you're talking about. Right. And, you know, so that to me was like, yes, a plus, you know. Okay, well, I would like to shift more towards looking to the future in our crystal ball segment. And here I like asking guests about where their specific profession or industry may be headed, for example, trends, predictions, and so on. 
but perhaps I can lead off with this thought. I mean, it would seem that there are fractures within communities all over, whether they be politically based, socioeconomic, or otherwise. Your events, Bliss for Laundry or Mess Hall, could be really effective ways to reconnect and bridge differences. I'd be curious about your thoughts on that. Well, I think um, for sure, um, after what happened, you know, the 18 months that we were all in confined, you know, more or less around the world, um, we, from sort of my two businesses' point of view, um, how much we we were missing the sort of in person and the gathering. I think it was very interesting to hear stories about people thriving and sort of taking a stock of what their life was like and literally changing their lives thanks to the pandemic. Um, but then you change in a way that you are now more mindful and you are, um, you know, make decisions and do things in your life that are more with um, conscious, you know? Um, so I think for us, for like, for me, as like one of the owners of Mess Hall and B Bliss Before Laundry, um, they're both events, uh, spaces or, or um, platforms where we allow people to gather and come together. And I think, I mean, I would hope uh, that, um, you know, people pick and choose what to do and how to come together with other people. And, you know, whether it's that through a wellness retreat um, that, you know, you are taken away for three days and do nothing but sort of, you know, really center into yourself and learn more about yourself and give uh, yourself a chance to pause or through Ms. Hall that you come for an hour and a half sort of knife skills and like, you know, a fun class. Um, it's, it's sort of, I think it's like a great opportunity. And I think we're sitting in sort of that right moment that we just allow people now to like explore what sort of like that in-person gathering feels like again, and really, really enjoy it. Um, we just had one last weekend and like, mm -hmm. you can see people just wanting to like hug each other and like have really close conversations because this is what we do as humans. So I think, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sort of grateful. It was very hard for both businesses to be in the stall for so long, but I am very grateful that I'm part of that sort of energies that that's bringing back people together, that energy in the world that needs to, to so that we, because that's how we are. Like humans are, this is, you know, it's a human nature to somehow gather. And I think around yeah. food will always be something that we can't um, keep away from. Right, exactly. And it, like you said, the food sort of brings people together, the atmosphere as well, and almost it could act as a way of, you know, enhancing sort of like a social cohesion amongst people, despite perhaps differences in worldviews and everything else. I guess the, that again, that idea of social cohesion or harmony maybe being brought back in, whereas, you know, during the pandemic, everyone's separate, and it's so easy to fall into your own little tunnels or, or views or vantage points of how you you're interpreting the world and everything around you but to come together and speak with others who may share similarities but also perhaps differences it kind of brings it things back in focus again that we're all in this together and we need to find ways of working with one another yeah and i think i mean it's going to take a bit of time some countries have have done it better than you know, here in Canada, um, we are still sort of that segregation of the vaccinated and not vaccinated. And, and I think that's still um, going to take some time to like, you know, that whole social cohesion to really come together, because I think that has fragmented a little bit. Um, and I'm just, I'm hoping that it's just like another little bump that we have to sort of, you know, get over so that we can really have that sort of really like just back to, not back to normal, because there's things that really you know, um, shifted over the pandemic. But I think um, just that that sense of, of belonging and just welcoming everyone, no matter what, no matter who you are, no matter what your decisions were in terms of your own health. Um, so I think that's still going to take some time. But for the time being, like I am very honored to sort of be part of that 
sort of that industry that it's allowing people to to just remember and really share it, cherish what it is yeah, to eat. Yeah, well, you're, you're creating dialogue. You're creating opportunities for dialogue. And I guess that's where it all starts. I mean, that's where the optimism sort of comes from in, in us sort of coming together and working through these differences, I suppose. For sure. So. And food will always be optimistic. I mean, you can have a bad cook and a really bad meal, but you still are gathering and complaining about the food, but it's still going to be, you know, at a fun time regardless. Exactly. Well, on that note, Gabby, I think this is probably a good spot to, uh, to close it out. Um, but it's been an absolute pleasure. I really do thank you for joining us on the show today. No, it's been really fun. It's uh, it's just nice to sort of um, you know take a look at what I do and what what my businesses have been able to bring to community and yeah to where I am. That it's kind of fun to be able to share it. So thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. Well, for those interested in learning more about Gabby and her work, you can find and connect with her through her website, www.gabbyflores.ca, and on her Instagram, at gabbyflores.nto. And if you missed it, this information will be included in the show notes. Also, if you like today's show, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you access your podcasts. And don't forget to join us for the next episode of Life as a, where we'll continue to explore and unearth the details of professions and the people behind them. I'm Christopher Schoenwald, your host, and until next time, stay curious about life and living. Thank you.